We are the paradoxical ape. Bipedal, naked, large-brained. Long the master of fire, tools, and language, but still trying to understand ourselves. Aware that death is inevitable, yet filled with optimism. We grow up slowly. We hand down knowledge. We empathize and deceive. We shape the future from our shared understanding of the past. Carta brings together experts from diverse disciplines to exchange insights on who we are and how we got here. An exploration made possible by the generosity of humans like you. Okay, so in keeping with the theme of comparative anthropogeny, I'm going to talk about a protein called SIGLEC11. It's found in the human brain, but not in the chimpanzee brain or the brains of other great apes. This is a presentation I'm making along with many people in my group who worked on this topic over the years and others in the, in the, in the literature. And this particular one is with Dylan Chen, a young uh, assistant professor in neuroscience. So what is a SIGLEC? A SIGLEC is a sialic acid recognizing Ig superfamily neglectin. That's a mouthful. So what is that? These are proteins found on the surface of cells, particularly in the immune system. They're called type 1 proteins because they pass through the membrane of the cell one, one time. And at the outer end, they have what's called a reset domain that binds sialic acid. We'll come back to that in a minute. Below that, there are some C2 set domains which extend the protein down to the membrane. And then down below, inside the cell, you have intracellular signaling motifs. So this is a molecule that can be seen on the outside and send a signal on the inside. So what is the sialic acid that is recognizing? Every cell in your body is covered with a dense and complex array of glycans. And sugar chains, sort of like an icing on the cake, really. And on this, on this icing, you find the outer ends, you find these sugars called sialic acid, which are sticking out in the top of the sugar chain. This is a cartoon, of course. These molecules are primarily found in animals that neutrostrom lineage. So these are vertebrates and higher vertebrates, animals with the backbone, like humans. But curiously, these molecules are also found in certain bacterial pathogens that invade neutrostroms. We'll come back to that in a minute. There's a reason for that. So what do sialic acids do? Given the negative charge and the high mass and the huge density on cells, they have many biophysical roles affecting all sorts of biophysical properties of cells. And given their location, they're the target for just numerous pathogens, influenza, malaria, cholera, many coronaviruses, many other bugs. I could fill the entire screen with examples of bugs that bind sialic acid. Makes sense. They're sticking out there on the outer end of the surface, and they're, they're targets for many, many bad guys. Meanwhile, a bunch of other bad guys are coating themselves with sialic acid. They look it's sort of molecular mimicry, making them look, them look like you, basically. And there's some evidence for sialic acid involvement in, in interspecies recognition in terms, of, in terms of reproduction. But for a long time, this is all that is known. So if this is the sole purpose of sialic acid, why would you persist for more than 500 million years of evolution? It's bad for you, right? Turns out there are proteins that actually recognize sialic acid inside your system, which are critical. And more recently, we and others have been looking at these molecules. And the particular class of molecules we're going to talk about are called SIGLEX. We just already told you a little bit about them. And what they what they do in a particular SIGLEX I'm going to focus in on. So the major role of these SIGLEX is to recognize endogenous sialic acid, the self associated molecular patterns. They, they inhibit and they dampen the innate immune cell response. Why would you want this going on? Well, because you've got a bunch of immune cells floating around your body that are trying to attack you all the time. And by having sialic acid, say, stop, I'm, I'm self. And so it's the recognition of self. These interaction of self sialic acids can interact both on the same cell cis and another cell, trans. And when the sialic acid binding occurs, it triggers what's called phosphorylation on the inside of the membrane. 
and these motifs get, get activated, and that keeps the inflammatory genes in the off state. So you've got all these very, very strong uh, soldiers floating around your body, but they're kept off because they keep seeing these sialic acids. Okay, this is me, self. And there's a whole bunch of them, different ones found in different cell types. And the one we're going to look at today is called Siglac 11. It's a number according to the time they were found. Now, Siglac 11, if you look in any, any tissue of a, of a, of a mammal or uh, in, uh, primates, including humans, you find it in, in tissue macrophages in all tissues. But in the brain, the macrophage is called microglia. You can see here that Siglac 11 and this colored patterns here, Siglac 11 shown in green, is present in the brain in the microglia. Ilium would just be an example in a tissue in a, in a small intestine. So years ago when we looked at it, uh, we noticed, Nissi Barkey noticed that while the, the brown staining you've seen here is from macrophages in, in humans and chimpanzees, in the brain, this brown stain, this cigarette level is only found in microglia of the brain, those little brown, brown dots that you're seeing over there. If you look over to the right, the chimpanzees is hardly there at all. Same with the other apes. So at that time, they actually had found what was the first human-specific protein in the brain, a protein that's expressed all through the body, but not in the brain of other animals, including the primates, but in, in humans only. Now, these microglia are sort of like, like this, the macrophages of the brain, but they have many other functions. They don't just, just clean up messes uh, or bacteria or anything like that. They have many, many functions beyond pathogen protection, removal of aggregated proteins, they shape neurocircuit activity, they have effects on development of neurogenesis. They influence neural activity acutely and long-term memory of monitoring of synaptic integrity. So they do a lot of other things besides just the, the macrophage function. The other thing about human cyclic 11 is it recognizes something called polysialic acid. Remember, I told you it was sialic acid. It was one copy. But if you look in the brain, particularly in the vertebrate brain, and the developing brain, you see these extended chains of sialic acid that you can see uh, held, heading out called polysialic acid. And these, these polysialic acids also bind molecules with efficiency to recognize BDNF, FGF, which are critical factors in brain functions. So they're expressed on, on neuronal cells and they recognize the signal 11, but they also recognize these other important molecules. Turns out that the brain is particularly rich in polysialic acid in the early days of development, and before birth, soon after birth, and growth goes down over time. Well, the human-specific pathogen called E. coli K1, not the garden variety E. coli here, but the special K1 expresses identical polysialic acid that you see in the, in the brain. So like a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's coated itself in polysialic acid get in the brain. And in fact, 20% of cases in neonatal meningitis caused by K1, as in developing countries, it might be higher. This uh, polysaccharide of 2 8 link sialic acid, so this, this bug is making itself look exactly like the brain. And so if you look at the C30 related cyclic receptors of the brain, the, the polysialic acid is taking advantage of cyclic 11 and shutting down the, the innate immune cells in the brain, the mi microglia. The evolution always has more tricks up its sleeve. There's another, another group of cyclics that have the opposite action. They bind sialic acid, but they send a positive signal. Why would you want that? sort of evil twin, if you will, of Siglac 11 and Siglac 16. It gives you the opposite reaction. It attacks and it sees polysialic acid. So, the, and the other peculiar thing is you look at these two proteins, you look at the amino term in the front end, they're 99% identical. But below that, they're only 80% identical. This complicated thing called a phylogram, basically phylogenetic um, You expect Siglac 11 to be in the same group with, with gorillas and, 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 and and chimpanzees and so on. But if you look at the uh, upper domain there, that's identical one, they're within a species. So that's when it's complicated. Basically, the idea is what's going on is that the genes code encoding 11 and 16 and adjacent to the, uh, the genome. They're sticking next to each other side by side. And during the process of, uh, of meiosis and uh, production of, of germ cells, they undergo switching. Something called gene conversion. They keep pasting each other, 11 and 16, keeping them identical in the first two domains. So you have molecules that are identical in the first two domains, but different in the other domains, and the opposite signal. So these are paired receptors, they're called. And they modulate the inflammatory response in the opposite directions. So here's Siglac 11 again. Here's the E. coli K1, the bad guy coming in polysialic acid, binding to Siglac 11 and says, shut down, I'm, I'm, I belong here. Along comes Siglac 16 and says, uh uh, we're, we're going to get you. We recognize you as being foreign because you get the opposite reaction. And so you have inhibitory and activating Siglex. 
11 and 16, all through the opposite responses. But people like K1 is not in the brain the vast majority of your life, or, or not at all, we hope. In fact, it has common brain ligands, mediating other functions in the brain. The other peculiar part of the story is the Siglex 16, where it's found in all chimpanzees and all the other apes, is knocked out in humans, in many humans, not in related primates. So you can find that there are many people, in fact, majority of you watching this cannot express Siglex 16. The genes are mutated, it's called a pseudogene, an active gene. Now, this is a very complicated slide meant for aficionados. You can come back and look at this later when this is put up by UCTV online in a, in a few months. A whole series of complicated events occurred where these two genes are attacked, uh, modified each other over time and ended up with the current situation. It's all unique to human events. So while well, it's sort of like a murder mystery, how all these things happen, it seems to be specific to humans. More recently, Messiah Hane from the Fitajima and, and lab in, in, in Japan, he was in the lab, in our lab, and he looked at human specific CIGLEC 11 and its effects in the brain. I won't go through this cartoon in detail, I'll just summarize what he found. The human specific CIGLEC 11 exists in alternate splice form. So it's missing one, the last fifth domain, the specific to the human brain again. And if you make a soluble form of this and look at binding, it binds better to polycyclic acid. Somehow, once the molecule ends up in the brain, we figured out a way to cut, cut out the last piece which makes it bind polycyclic acid even better. It's also prone to aggregation, affecting ligand binding ability. It can also be cut off and secreted in, into, into, the, into the extracellular space. And this human specific microglial variant doesn't come off by proteolysis, it comes off in like little soap bubbles, like so called exosomes. We have cyclic 11 and cyclic 16 coming out on little bubbles from neuron cells on the microglial cells, sorry. And these can be released. And so there's potential that polycyclic acid-mediated functions can be affected at a distance, not just between the two cells. So Siglec 11 and Siglec 16 express as paired receptors in tissue macrophages in human chimps and other non-human primates in, outside the brain. What's, what's, what's the uniquely human features of Siglec 11 and 16? Siglec 11 is converted by pseudogenes. It's a complicated story, but kept an open reading frame. Uh, so that was unexpected the way that happened. It's expected in brain microglia in all humans, not observed in chimpanzees and other great apes. So the endogenous ligands are developing human brain, including polycyclic acid. The microglia in brain only of humans has one less C2 set domain than other forms, brain specific, human specific form. This form can secrete with exosomes, like I said, these little bubbles that come out of the cell and therefore influence functions at a distance. It has endogenous ligands developing in the human brain, including polycyclic acid. Likely allows invasion of the neonatal brain by E. coli K1. It seems very likely. But those such invasions are counter by expression activating CIGLEC 16. But CIGLEC 16 is intact protein only in some humans. But the messenger RNA is present even when both alleles have a common deletion. There's something else going on there. The RNA is doing something besides the protein. The other peculiar thing is CIGLEC 11 and 16 have shown up in unusual sites where you don't normally expect them, probably because of this major change that occurs in this region of genomes. For example, the uterus, of all places, Missy Varki found that human cervix, which is the exit part of the uterine cervix, express 11 and 16. So other interesting things are happening with 11 and 16 in different parts of the human body, and we haven't really pursued them yet. Lastly, I just want to point out that this is not an only case of siglex changes in humans. In fact, all these siglex that have a star above them, they have a story about human specific changes. And so these multiple genomic events altered human, human hominin siglex biology, predating the common ancestors of humans and archaic hominins. So the archaic hominins are Neanderthals and Denisovans, our closest extinct evolution cousins. If you look at this uh, diagram, uh, you can see that uh, many of these changes occurred in the common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees, oh, I'm sorry, of Neanderthals and Denisovans, before the common ancestor of Neanderthals and Denisovans of humans. So there were one or two we're finding that are human specific. But most of the apes don't have any of these changes. And so this is written up a little in science. They talked about an ancient microbial arms race. They think the signature of something that happened maybe 500 million years ago, prior to the common ancestor of Neanderthals and humans. But many changes occurred since then and have been accumulating in humans and being selected for or against depending on the impact on the human brain. Some of them are finding a specific humans, not even Neanderthals and Denisovans. And so we trace this genetic response to pathogens back to this common ancestor. And obviously there's a lot of complexity in what I told you about, but 
you can tell that there's some, it's like a murder mystery, like I said, there are many things going on, we haven't, don't fully understand them, they all fit together in one story. Apparently affecting not only the brain, the human brain, the development of the human brain, but also the interaction with pathogens. So thank you very much.